In this lesson, you're going to learn 21 English words that you can use today that will impress everyone. These words will impress your teacher, your boss and colleagues, and native speakers. Welcome back to J4S English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. Number one, dazzling. Dazzling. That's a fun word to say. Repeat after me. Dazzling. This is an adjective that means brilliant and impressive, leaving a lasting impression. I could say, you look absolutely dazzling in that outfit. And notice how I added absolutely to make it even stronger. Or I could say, she started her presentation with a dazzling smile. So what do you think of my smile? Is it dazzling? If it is, then put dazzling, put dazzling in the comments because putting it in the comments will help you remember it. Put dazzling in the comments. Number two, caveat. Repeat after me, caveat. This is a noun and it's a warning or cautionary statement. These words will impress native speakers, but there's one caveat. There's one warning. You need to pronounce them correctly. So repeat after me, caveat. Or you could say he agreed to be interviewed with the caveat that he could review the article. Don't worry about taking notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can find the link in the description. Number three, alleviate. Repeat after me, alleviate. This is a verb that means to make something negative, like a pain or a problem, less severe. For example, taking a walk can alleviate stress. It can make it less severe. Or practicing your speech beforehand, maybe for a job interview or a presentation, can alleviate your public speaking anxiety. It can make it less severe. So make sure you practice. Number four, a fun one to say, conundrum. Repeat after me, conundrum, conundrum. This is a noun and it's a confusing and difficult problem or question. He faced a conundrum. So notice that verb is face. You face a conundrum. He faced a conundrum about which job offer to accept. So maybe he has this job offer, but then he calls you as his friend and he says, it's my dream job, but if I accept it, I'll have to move overseas away from my family. And then you can reply back and say, well, that's a conundrum. That's a difficult problem you're facing. Number five, frivolous. Also fun to say, frivolous. Repeat after me frivolous. This is an adjective that means not having any serious purpose or value. We commonly use this with money. He spends all his money on frivolous items, on items that have no purpose or value. Or you could say they argued over something frivolous, something meaningless, no purpose, no value. Hopefully you're thinking this lesson isn't frivolous, which means it does have purpose and it does provide you value. So this lesson isn't frivolous. Would you agree? Put that's right, put that's right, that's right in the comments. Number six, perplex. Repeat after me, perplex. This is a verb that means to confuse and worry someone by being difficult to understand or solve. For example, the patient's symptoms perplexed the doctors. The doctors found the symptoms difficult to understand and then solve, so it caused some worry or confusion. Or you could say, I was perplexed by these words, the words in this lesson, notice that passive structure. I was perplexed by these words, but Jennifer helped me understand them. Hopefully you agree with that. Number seven, nostalgia. 
Repeat after me, nostalgia. This is a noun and it's a feeling of pleasure, but also slight sadness when you think about things that happened in the past. Some people feel nostalgia because nostalgia is a noun, so you can feel nostalgia. Some people feel nostalgia for their school days. So thinking about their school days in the past, it brings them pleasure, but a little bit of sadness. Can you relate to that? Or you could say, hearing that song again filled him with nostalgia. You can be filled with this noun, nostalgia. Number eight, ooh, this is a good one, ominous. Repeat after me, ominous. This is an adjective and it means giving the impression that something bad or unpleasant is going to happen. We commonly use this with the weather. You could look up and say, the dark clouds are ominous. So what's the bad thing that's going to happen? A severe storm. Or you could say he had an ominous feeling about the meeting. Something bad is going to happen. Maybe the client won't sign the contract or he won't get the answer he wanted. Number nine, acquiesce. Repeat after me, acquiesce, acquiesce. This is a verb and it means to agree passively. So to agree, but you don't really want to. You don't want to initially, but you eventually say, okay, I acquiesce. For example, I wanted to go to Hawaii, but my husband wanted to go to Iceland. I acquiesced. So my question for you, my smart student is, where did I go on vacation? Did I go to Hawaii or Iceland? Put your answer in the comments, Hawaii or Iceland. Put it in the comments. Number 10, consensus. Repeat after me, consensus. This is a noun and it means general agreement among a group. Remember, to have general agreement, you don't need 100%, you need 50, 51, 55. That would be the minimum amount for a general consensus. For example, we couldn't reach a consensus. So the verb you use is to reach a consensus. We couldn't reach a consensus on where to go for vacation, Hawaii or Iceland. We couldn't reach a consensus. Or you could say there is a consensus that the proposal needs revisions. So this means that the majority of people agree that the proposal needs revisions. Number 11, itinerary. I'm always surprised when my students, even my advanced students, don't know this word because it's so commonly used. Repeat after me, itinerary. This is a noun and it's a detailed plan or route for an event or vacation. For example, have you planned your itinerary for Iceland? Because remember, I acquiesced. So I agreed with my husband who wanted to go to Iceland, even though I wanted to go to Hawaii. Did you understand that? Did you get that? So have you planned your itinerary for Iceland yet? So the itinerary would tell you what activities you're doing on each day of that trip. Or you could say, we have a very busy itinerary, all the things you have planned. Now don't confuse this with the next word, number 12, agenda. Repeat after me, agenda. Most students know this, but don't confuse it with an itinerary because an, an agenda is a list of items to be discussed at a meeting. So you can ask, what's the agenda for the meeting? Or what's the first item on the agenda? Or in emails, it's very common to send or receive an email that says, please find attached the agenda for today's conference call. Number 13, lucrative. 
lucrative. Repeat after me, lucrative. This is an adjective and it means producing a great deal of profit or financial success. We use this specifically with money. You could say photography isn't lucrative. It doesn't produce a great deal of financial success, but it's my passion. Or you could say there was a general consensus. Most people agree. There was a general consensus that the partnership would be lucrative, would result in money, financial success. So that's a great one to have in your vocabulary. Number 14, contingency. Do you know this one? Contingency. Repeat after me, contingency. This is a noun and it's a future event or circumstance which is possible but cannot be predicted with certainty. So it's possible but not guaranteed. Here's how this word is most commonly used. We need a contingency plan in case of an emergency. So this is a plan about a potential circumstance that's possible but not guaranteed. And the plan, the contingency plan, will tell you what to do in the event of an emergency. Or you could say, we must prepare for all possible contingencies. Number 15, tangible. Repeat after me, tangible. This is a noun and it means real, something you can touch, show, or even experience. For example, the project resulted in tangible benefits. I can show you the benefits on a chart. You can touch the benefits such as money or you have an experience such as doing something because of those benefits. It's tangible. Or you might say, we need tangible evidence to support our claims. You need evidence that people can touch, see, or experience. It must be tangible. This is commonly used with assets because there are tangible assets such as machinery and buildings. You can touch them, you can look at them, they're real. Number 16, incentive. Repeat after me, incentive. This is a noun and it's a thing that motivates or encourages someone to do something. So for example, I need to give you and all of my students an incentive to subscribe. I need to encourage you to subscribe by providing something of value. So the fact that I upload videos every single day is your incentive to subscribe. So make sure you subscribe, like this video, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. I have other incentives for you once you subscribe. Number 17, metrics. Repeat after me, metrics, metrics. This is a noun and it's a standard of measurement. For example, the size of your vocabulary is one of the metrics of fluency, the number of words you know, which is why I'm teaching you 21 words so you can improve this metric, this measure of performance for your fluency. As you know, on your IELTS or other language exams, they judge you on different areas. Those are the different metrics. Or if you want to improve your fluency, a good question to ask is what are the key metrics of fluency and that will tell you what areas to focus on. Number 18, redundant. Repeat after me, redundant. Redundant. This is a noun and it means not or no longer needed or useful. For example, some tasks have become redundant due to automation, AI, ChatGPT. Or you could say typewriters are now redundant. They're no longer used. Although they were once the only device that people had to write with. So can you think of something in today's modern world that is now redundant? My example was a typewriter. Share your own example in the comments below, just for fun. Number 19, streamline. 
streamline. Repeat after me, streamline. This is a verb and it means to make something faster, easier, or better. For example, online learning has streamlined education. It's made it faster, easier, better. Would you agree with that? Or you might ask in a meeting, how can we streamline our operations? How can we make our operations faster, better, easier? Number 20, glaring. Repeat after me, glaring. This is an adjective and it's when something bad is extremely obvious. It's glaring. For example, we can't hire her. She made glaring spelling mistakes in her CV. So when you look at the CV, the spelling mistakes are extremely obvious. They're glaring. So that CV is going in the garbage. Or you could say there was a glaring contradiction in his statement. The contradiction was extremely obvious. Now, do you know what a contradiction is? This is word 21, contradiction. Repeat after me, contradiction. And this is a combination of words that is nonsense because some of the words suggest the opposite of some of the others. That's a confusing definition, but listen to this simple example. She's an honest politician. Now, some people might reply back and say, an honest politician? Isn't that a contradiction? Because when you hear the word honest, an image of a politician is not what most people think of. So some people might say that the combination of words, an honest politician is a contradiction. Here's an everyday example. You said you hate the heat, but you want to go to Hawaii. Isn't that a contradiction? Because Hawaii is very hot but you just said you hate the heat. So that's a contradiction. Now you have 21 new words in your vocabulary. What's your favorite word? Mine is conundrum because that is fun to say. And it's also an interesting conversation to have with someone when you're facing a conundrum or when you're caught in a conundrum yourself. So share your favorite word from the list in the comments. And remember, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And I have another incentive for you. You can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And do you know all the words on this list? Make sure you watch the lesson right now.